Hello and welcome to Politics. Today I'm Farooq Fitafi. We are, once again, we are going to talk about Pakistan's politics. Uh, when you look at the government, it seems very comfortable. Uh, when you look at their headspace, it seems that they don't have any concern about any serious challenge uh, in coming days. It, uh, they are uh, working on the executive power, using executive power and continuing <coughs> without any uh, impediment. But on the other side, we have been repeatedly telling you about a stalemate that exists in the parliament. That means while the government has all the executive powers, its uh, legislative capacity seems to be quite limited. And that is one reason why opposition repeatedly keeps on reviving uh, hopes of uh, toppling the apple cart. Uh, we saw Shabazz Sharif actually uh, going to Karachi uh, where uh, along with Maulana Fadl Rahman, he announced that they are going to march on Islamabad. But that is not all. Shahbaz Sharif earlier had talked about uh, uh, the national reconciliation. Then he talked about national dialogue. And finally, now he is talking <coughs> about a national government. So national, uh, the word national seems to be the buzzword here. But what does he mean by that? He means uh, all political parties come together and form a government, minus perhaps PTI. And I don't know how that works, but it is his point of view. Uh, on the other side, we saw People's Party also actually criticizing, but criticizing not only the government, but also PMLN and PDM. So this is a very interesting opposition that keeps on attacking itself. Uh, it, uh, I believe in scientific terms, it is called autophagy. But uh, regardless of that, we are going to talk about the prospects of all these talks, whether there is a possibility of uh, all political parties working together. Uh, and uh, remember that the government of Pakistan, the federal government actually keeps on pushing for electoral reforms. Today also, Baba, Baba Ravan Saab uh, spoke about the matter, and he said that he will uh, uh, ensure that the next elections take place with the help of EVMs, electronic voting machines. We are going to talk about all these matters. And in order to help us understand these issues in the studio, we are joined by Javed Jadun Saab, who is a senior journalist and a political analyst. Thank you very much, sir, for being part of the program. Um, uh, on Skype, we are joined by Ghazala Sefi Sahiba, who is <coughs> MP, uh, MNA of a ruling party, Pakistan Tarikin Saab. Ghazala Sahiba, thank you very much for being part of the program. Uh, Kaiser Ahmed Sheikh Saab also joins us, who is MA of Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz, the leading opposition party. Uh, with your permission, Javed Jadun Saab, I have to start with Ghazala Sefi Sahiba. Ghazala Sefi Sahiba, your party uh, seems to be pushing for electoral reforms. But we haven't seen that kind of consensus building. There was a letter that was uh, written to Shabazz Sharif Saab uh, for the appointment of uh, uh, officials in the empty uh, uh, posts of uh, Election Commission of Pakistan. But beyond that, we haven't uh, seen any push. Why would that be? Uh, you'll have to unmute your mic, ma'am. I can't hear you. Thank right. you, Dr. Padavi, for calling me in, in this program. And uh, we have talked about electoral reforms in the parliament, otherwise in press conferences, in TV talk shows, and many a times we're in, uh, with the opposition uh, group of people as well. You see, uh, it has to be done because uh, and, and it, it can't be done in one way. We cannot have just PTI's uh, decision on it. We want the consent of the opposition parties also because the electoral reforms are inevitable and we need to have them uh, before the next elections, which are not very far off. And we do not want, I mean, general consensus of people in Pakistan who are a part of election uh, 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 who, who, who vote for the people who become come into power uh, have concerns and many a times after the elections there is always some kind of a, um, pulling each other and, uh, and uh, into dirt and asking them that you have got 
into the pa into power game because of some right. alliance. Uh, Ghazala Safi Saiba, uh, we so know we about your party's case uh, uh, for the electoral reforms. The concern mm -hmm. is that in order to pass any uh, any law or any reform, you'll have to go to the parliament, right? The parliament uh, has uh, um, uh, seen your uh, uh, wafer thin majority and that actually causes a lot of problems. Why are you not approaching the opposition for this work? And if you are approaching the opposition, why is it not cooperating? Well, we have uh, asked the opposition to bring in whatever they want to put into the electoral reforms instead of rejecting, rejecting the whole idea of uh, the electoral reforms because the electoral reforms are the future of Pakistan. They, are, they will be the decisive uh, moment when, they, when the whole parliament sits together, including the treasury benches and the opposition, together decide and come on one page. There will be some differences, but completely rejecting the idea of electoral reforms is something which uh, at least I cannot comprehend. Um, we have to understand uh, the logic behind the saying no to it because just if if there is one kind of a machine which they do not agree upon then what kind of a reform are they asking for is something which is of concern to us uh, in the government as well so you will have to ask the same question from the honorable uh, MNA sitting on uh, uh, the PMLN seat to right. let us and know I'm going to do that uh, with your permission, allow me uh, allow me to actually bring in Kaiser Ahmed Sheikh Saab. Uh, Sheikh Saab, uh, your uh, take on this matter, because uh, it seems that uh, your party's uh, major complaints about 2018 elections are primarily about the electoral uh, process. So why not actually work with the government and ensure that electronic voting machines are introduced? I remember. Uh, uh, your uh, party's government also, at that time also, your government was trying to push for EVMs. The same machine that was approved by your time, your government, is not acceptable to you now. Why so? Bismillah rahman rahim Mr. Kutafi. Uh, as, as you very well know, that uh, since the beginning, we have been asking the uh, government to come forward and uh, have a sitting with us to talk about a charter of uh, economy and uh, other matters. So whenever there have been uh, throughout this uh, three years, uh, the prime minister has never uh, uh, never come uh, for the meeting with the opposition leader or because it is it is a, a, a government which extends uh, the cooperation or which needs all this legislation to be approved with the uh, with the consensus uh, uh, because they don't have a two-third majority so they need the members of the uh, opposition in the parliament so that's why whenever there has been a chance you must be remembering once there was a, 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 a part of uh, uh, amendments and their uh, opposition was asked to come and to uh, give some suggestion and whenever some suggestions were given, immediately after that, the government uh, started saying that uh, opposition is asking an arrow. So I don't understand why there has never been a chance. Whenever uh, there was a meeting, for example, uh, for uh, armed forces representatives, there was a meeting right. on defense. Even then, right. the prime minister was not, uh, not there. And even right. otherwise, when there up. was a Shakes up. Uh, no. Sorry to cut you, but uh, I'm glad that you actually brought up the matter of uh, speaking to the government or whether the government is capable of sitting with the opposition. Now the question is: Your party initially was talking about uh, a national consensus and charter of economy, as you pointed out. Then it became national dialogue, and now we are hearing that the um, uh, that a leader of opposition is talking about. Um, a national government minus PTI. So which one is it? Uh, are you going to talk to the government or are you going to confront the government to the extent that you make it impossible for the government to function? You see, uh, uh, Mr. Pitafi, you very well know that uh, the president of PMLN, Mr. Shabazz Sharif, has always been talking about reconciliation. And uh, he categorically said 
in one uh, TV interview that uh, forget the past and let's come together and think about the country, about the poor people, about the about the uh, inflation and about all these uh, base, uh, core problems which our public has. But uh, has, it has never been uh, uh, replied. So even today, uh, you must be remembering that in various programs, even in our, our finance committee meeting, even in the National Assembly, number of our members talked about uh, 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 discussing various matters. But when we found that uh, government doesn't have any intention, so what to what to talk? Whenever we go there, whenever the prime minister has always been asking that we need an hour. So even today, uh, uh, yes, two three days before, uh, Mr. Shavash Sharif was in Karachi. He came on my house to attend the meeting with the business people, and he spent three hours in my house at Karachi. And we had also a chance to discuss with him. Uh, on all these matters. So yeah, my right. point is he always talk on reconciliation. He wants, yeah, right. even he talked about the uh, um, uh, national government or uh, the government uh, which should be uh, represented by all parties. Uh, it, it doesn't mean that he talked right now or he talked uh, after the next elections, but uh, yeah. his intention is that to sort out the matters, we definitely need consensus. Only one party cannot uh, resolve these problems. And even right. otherwise, you see, and we talk right. when uh, we that is, uh, Sheikh Sab, that is uh, a very uh, interesting uh, take because uh, yeah. uh, I'm uh, sure uh, I'm, I'm sure that Shahbaz Sharif Saab was talking about a national consensus government. But on the other hand, today we saw uh, Javed Jadun Saab, uh, uh, Maryam Nawaz also talking to the media. And she said that uh, we are ready to actually work with everybody minus the government. So there seems to be a kind of consensus developing within uh, within PTI, uh, within PMLN, that they are ready to, Maryam Nawaz is ready to support Shahbaz Sharif's uh, uh, you know, political moves. But the caveat is they cannot work with the PTI government. Do you think something is changing? What is forcing P PMLN now suddenly <coughs> to come back to life and start pushing for a change? Thank you very much, Farah. I think it's very <clears throat> kind of a strain that uh, after remaining in hibernation for quite a long time, yeah. PDM once again has started uh, uh, thinking about launching a campaign against the government. Yeah. Uh, while on the contrary, I think uh, nothing is left as far as any kind of a protest movement is concerned because right. uh, <clears throat> there was a time when uh, we could have imagined that maybe they were gaining some momentum and uh, then uh, PDM uh, got uh, fragmented, and all of a sudden, Pakistan People's Party and uh, Awami uh, uh, and uh, the the other political party from KP decided to leave PDM, and uh, then uh, we saw that uh, uh, all of a sudden they decided not to launch any movement or uh, go for the resignations. Mm -hmm. I, I I really can't understand what really happened in between that they decided to. Uh, launch a campaign against the government and march towards the federal capital because I don't see any kind of a support as far as this movement is concerned. People are uh, basically, the much water is, uh, has flown down the river since uh, focus has shifted to regional politics of after uh, the, uh, the most important event taking place, the event of uh, American troops withdrawal from Afghanistan. Okay. I think the focus primarily shifted from domestic politics to regional politics. Mm -hmm. And now you are, uh, what you said is that probably uh, Shahbaz Sharif is talking about a national government and uh, Mariam Nawaz would like to support his ideas. What kind of a national government he is talking about? Because there is a sitting government in federal capital. Yeah. And the there government is a, is a legitimate government and they have uh, completed three years successfully. And I think one year to go and then we... Uh, simply land uh, ourselves into the election uh, election year, that yeah. is 2023. Election mode, yeah. So I think uh, it is very, very hard to understand uh, if they are not willing to talk with the government, then whom they are willing to talk with. Uh, yeah. There's only legitimate actor in, in the country uh, which they can engage with is the federal government, and the government is the PTI government. Oh, right. So I think it, it is simply a kite flying. Mm -hmm. Mulana Fazirman probably felt that he was left uh, absolutely... Uh, meaningless and then he probably they decided to go for something uh, where he could be uh, the, he could have some kind of a legitimacy as mm -hmm. far as political stature is concerned on the contrary uh, blow heart and blow code on part of uh, Pakistan Muslim uh, Pakistan Muslim League 
uh, because we have seen in the past as well, Mariam Nawaz very active and then she stays uh, outside the political uh, right. uh, 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 political uh, sort of activities. I, I yeah. mean, people get very confused messages because of that. Either right. you are you want to topple the government or you want to continue with the same uh, setup and then you wait for the elections to come in 2023 and then you can test your waters and if people are willing to go for you, then you can form a government. I think it is kind of a conspiratorial uh, thinking on part of PMLN that maybe a, a national government, national government comprising what? If minus PTI, then what kind of uh, political parties they would like to have on board? And how? And how? Even I mean, if you topple a government, that means you are going to have a new election. A new election. Uh, within, since 1973, within, there hasn't been a, a toppling of a government. No government has fallen absolutely. after, sorry, 1977. So. Uh, unless, unless there is extra constitutional yeah. intervention, which yeah. I don't see happening in Pakistan. Uh, because Do you see any, uh, are you curious about the timing? Because uh, uh, I remember when uh, uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan, along with the half of Pakistan state's uh, leading lights, uh, was going to meet uh, Donald Trump when he was president. All of a sudden, we saw the tape scandal. The second time he was going to the UN meeting, at that time, all of a sudden, Maulana Fazl Rahman decided to march on Islamabad. And now, uh, Afghanistan is quite an interesting, uh, you know, de development, and that is when the opposition parties have chosen to actually do it. Uh, Farooq, this is what I was talking about, that uh, it's a country of 200 million people, uh, uh, a very young population, educated people in urban centers. You really can't fool the people all the time. You can right. fool some of the people some of the time, but not all the people no, all the my, time. My, I, I, I mean, politics. I will bring this question once again to you. Allow me to actually go back to uh, our uh, m &A from Karachi, from PTI. Hazala Safi Saiba, you are uh, from uh, uh, Karachi. And one very interesting statement was made by Shahbaz Sharif. He said that first uh, Prime Minister of Pakistan uh, announced a pa development package for Karachi that was 162 billion uh, rupees and then 1.1 1. 1, uh, trillion rupees in 2020 as well. But uh, only pennies have been uh, released and nothing of that support has come forward. Uh, what do you have to say on that? Well, first of all, I would like to say that Mr. Shabazz Sharif and uh, Ms. Mariam Nawaz uh, or Ms. Mariam Safdar are not on the same page. If, if uh, Shabazz Sharif Sahab is talking about reconciliation, a, gum, uh, a, a group of people from his party want to have a reconciliation with the government. At another point, he says there should be a national government with no participation of PTI. Mariam Nawaz is in uh, conflict with the ideas of Shabazz Sharif. It's very openly seen. And now they agree together on one thing, that there should be a new government with no participation of PTI, which is a sort of confusion, uh, confusion create, uh, creation for a lot of people. And people are not able to comprehend what is the agenda behind. And rightly so that when uh, you mentioned that whenever the country goes through any national crisis or any national, uh, uh, you know, face a problem or face something new coming up, uh, that is the time when uh, PMLN, gum, uh, PMLN opposition uh, tries to hit hard on the government, not realizing that what kind of a uh, uh, rupture are you going to do to, to the national integrity? Because at the end of the day, whoever belongs to whichever party, we have to understand that th there is a national integrity. There is a country but that is called Pakistan, and we all belong to Pakistan. We boast ourselves as patriots and Pakistanis. Then why is right. it that whenever the country has to That's go through some point, difficult... That's a good I hope now you can comment on uh, the concerns of your constituents uh, in Karachi as well um, about uh, uh, all these packages, whether they were released, whether they were actually uh, applied to Karachi or not. A lot of them have been released, and uh, apart from that, Shabazz Sharif Sahib does not have any stakes in Karachi. I don't know why he comes to Karachi and talks about issues that Karachi faces. He hasn't had any stakes in Karachi, yet he has to come in and create some kind of a new ideology 
sitting in Punjab. He has been a total Punjab uh, government. He has never cared about uh, Karachi when he was uh, when PMLN was in power. Karachi was completely neglected then. And Prime Minister Imran Khan has looked into the matter and has tried to improvise the situation of Karachiites and the common man of Karachi to give them some kind of by getting them clean water, facilitating them with the better uh, uh, opportunities of uh, communication and commuting uh, through um, um, the green buses. So all that is coming up. And we know that we have had a lapse of uh, a year and a half or almost two years of this COVID situation. And right. very soon we have buses in Karachi, circular railway is trying, we're trying to bring the solution for circular railway all sorts of transportation has to come to the people of Karachi so that people who work from 9 to 5 or 9 to 8 do not yeah. have no facility. Instead, they have a better uh, facilities in, in the city. A lot of funds have come in. A lot of them are coming in. There is a division of funds between the uh, parties who are allies, those who are uh, the MNAs and MPAs. They're going to come in. There's a lot which has taken care of. And lot will be lot more will be taken care of in these coming two years, inshallah. Right, uh, Kaza Sheikh Sab, let me ask you two questions. One is about uh, uh, your party's internal discussion. When you talk to uh, within your party, and when you are talking about the p potential of uh, opposition working with government, and uh, that PMLN and PTI should sit together and talk uh, things out, uh, what um, uh, is your explanation? regarding government's reluctance to talk to you? Uh, yes, Mr. Vitavi, uh, you talked, you uh, asked a very pertinent question. You see, uh, there is always a difference of opinion in large party when there are parties like this, and it's a healthy sign in democratic process that there should be a difference of opinion. But when a policy is formulated or when there has been a resolution, then we take one uniform decision. At present, uh, it has uh, not been fully debated in the party, as far as I know. That, uh, but uh, you see, uh, Mr. Shabaz Sharif, uh, president of the uh, Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz, he is the person from whom that uh, um, uh, things should uh, come. That what, what are the policy matters of the party? He very right. categorically talked in Karachi. He has a stake in Karachi because he himself contested uh, in, in this city and just uh, was managed to lose election with few hundred votes. So right. he's, uh, he feels Karachi, uh, uh, loves Karachi. He talks that he wants in his lifetime to uh, to make, uh, develop this uh, larger city, the business hub of uh, Pakistan, a city which what he did for Lahore, he just want to do in his lifetime uh, thing, things like to, to, for the development of Karachi. So, right. as far uh, as Kasa Shesab, as a, uh, I'll have to stop you here just to actually refine the answer, just to get to my question. Um, uh, when you think about government, and of course, uh, Shabazz Sharif has extended the hand of friendship or dialogue in the past as well. What do you think is stopping the government? What is your understanding? What is stopping the government from reaching out and taking that hand and uh, start a reconciliation process? This is the actual question. I don't know. Yeah. You see, all governments want, all governments want that they should have a discussion and should have some consensus in the parliament so that to to resolve the issues and to make uh, some legislation. I don't know. I really can't understand why the the prime minister of this country always uh, talking like Cho Daku uh, to opposition and whenever even he went to U.S. He said that when I will go back to Pakistan, I will switch off uh, air condition of uh, uh, Miyaj Nawashri. Of you can understand the level. Whenever there has been opportunity, never there has in three years there has not been any meeting. Some meetings were arranged by uh, 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 neutral people or some people who wanted to for the uh, for the uh, uh, Pakistan benefit or Pakistan uh, 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 development. So still there could not have been any chance. Now Mia Shabazz categorically in his uh, budget speech 
even after that in a television interviews he said okay whatever happened in the past was wrong and even there were our mistakes so what right. can uh, what else we say he said right. uh, that's that a very good point sir kaise shekh sir let me come back to jawed jawed sir we uh, we might uh, have very limited time today let me very quickly ask you it is quite evident that you don't approve of politics of confrontation at this moment so why is it that the government and opposition can not sit together and sort these things out i think the one reason is that there is a certain amount of mistrust between the two okay uh, pakistan muslim league and believes that uh, they are not going to have a fair deal as far as the coming elections are concerned <clears throat> they have been expressing their doubts over the intentions of the pti government while on the contrary pti believes that uh, their main agenda and their main drive against uh, corruption is probably uh, really hurting pakistan muslim league and and they are they continue to hold uh, the sway over the voters in punjab mm -hmm. i think this is what they were talking about in their manifesto as well and imran khan remained committed uh, to this particular objective of going after the corrupt practices in pakistan and i think the main target happened to be uh, pakistan muslim league and and pakistan peoples party mm -hmm. so the equation between the two is uh, very strange in the way that in the sense that pakistan muslim league and uh, believes that they can have a change of government while on the contrary i think uh, democracies don't function like this our political elite basically wants it to function the way they want it but i think let the democracy take its uh, right i'm i'm told then i have to apologize to all my participants as well we have to actually con conclude the program a bit early so javed jadun sahab thank you very much sir for your time kaisa sheikh sahab ghazala sahabi sahab thank you very much for your time as well we as you have listened to the critical issues now we have to conclude the program take care